we are back. We are live. Mr. Derek Barksdale is here. How are you doing, LT? I'm outstanding. You, sir? Great to have you here. And of course, you brought Carlos in today. Absolutely. Welcome, I do. Carlos, to the set. Thank you. Great to have you here. We are live on Facebook uh, if you have questions. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, transition. Yes. You know, transition from active duty to civilian life. It's something that, it, you know, no one can really explain. You kind of have to go through it, yeah. right? But it's something that's great to have in that situation is, you know, a career setup or, or a job opportunity or, or something going sure. for you, right? Mm, absolutely. You spent 21 years in the Navy. Yeah, Retired 21 years. And uh, you have 21 years of security, so to speak. You know, you never really had to worry about a job. You never really had to worry about, you know, money coming in each month. It was always there. It wasn't the greatest amount of money, but it was enough to, you know, keep your family taken care of. And uh, when you make that transition, you get concerned really quickly about where is the funds going to come from to you know help support my family and yeah. so uh, the military has come up with a great way of making that transition that much easier yeah and this is a new thing right yeah yeah well it, it's new from what i know of and <laughs> i really wish that they had it before and it's basically an internship program that you can do while you're on active duty still get paid your military pay and allowances and still be able to go into a company like military mutual and be provided with an intern opportunity to learn things like real estate, um, whatever it is that you want to get into. And in this case, Carlos took advantage of that program and it paid off uh, tremendously, not only for him, but for our organization and for the military. So it's a win-win for everyone. Carlos, to, to tell us, uh, what you know, when did you transition? What, how'd that go down? So um, last month um, <coughs> is when I officially went into uh, terminal leave but uh, a couple months ago, uh, I found out about this program, the SkillBridge, and it's an employment skills training program where, uh, like uh, Derek said, uh, you're allowed to go while you're getting paid for active duty. And uh, I basically went and talked to Derek because uh, a friend of mine's wife works with him, and I wanted to learn real estate. So I went and I asked him, would you let you know train me for 30 days and uh, while my command's still paying me, and uh, he said yes, so he, he made the training program for me. Uh, while I was still on active duty, I went and did 30 days. Uh, I learned uh, as much as I could. I was able to <laughs> actually... Uh, I think that might be the command <coughs> calling right now. Uh, uh, they, 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 have some, <laughs> they have some information for us here. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> They're, lit they're watching. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, exactly. hey, wait a minute, Carlos. Like, Hold uh, on, you need to report back to you're duty. You're supposed to be on <laughs> duty right now. <laughs> they still got me until the end of the month. So I know. He's on <laughs> the terminal <laughs> <day>. <laughs> So that so so what happens is basically you found out about this program and you go you know what I think I'm going to take advantage of that because I don't know what I'm going to do is that mm -hmm. what it was like, I'm not sure what I want to do next yes. but I know I want to learn real uh, estate. A friend of mine actually did it before me about six months prior and uh, I found out about it so I wanted to do the exact same thing and uh, you know it, it allows you to ha so that you don't have a break in uh, in pay and you can go straight from active duty to and get a head start on your future uh, you know career and that's exactly what I did I got to expose myself with uh, Derek. Also, I think it also helps because, you know, you don't know if you're going to end up liking something. So it, it allows you to get a feeling for, uh, you know, your future career and see if you like it. And, uh, and, and it did just that. Uh, I got a head start on everything. I had my license before I got out. And I was able to start right uh, while I'm still actually on leave. That's amazing. Oh, man, it was so That's amazing. Huge. I really wish I had something like that for me when I got out. And I have to give a quick shout out for Jamie Bonneman. Uh, she was on our show last yeah. uh, episode. And with that, she was the one that actually uh, worked with her husband, Dan, Dan Bonneman, who's the senior chief, and uh, was able to basically let Carlos know about the whole, you know, real estate thing. And so with that being said, it worked like a charm. Uh, he came on board. He was able to shadow me from what it looks like from a broker standpoint. Uh, he was able to shadow Maurice and other different agents and go on showings with them, learn little things like that are so simple, but when you do it your first time, it's scary, like opening up a lockbox, you know, to get into a home or mapping out the way that you're going to get from one point to another point and how you're not going back and forth throughout the, uh, the whole city on showings and you know, then he was able to sit down with um, our closing coordinator and learn the aspects of building up contracts and how they cascade and ultimately close. So it was so many different things. And at the same time, he was able to work with his first client while he was in an internship. And once he got his license, uh, he was able to basically be set up so he would be paid on a commission status. And he has two clients already that he's working with right now. So, I mean, it was a win-win for him, but more importantly, the people that we were able to serve on behalf of Carlos and 
will be able to do in the future. It's just huge. It really is. That's amazing because it's always the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. You're kind of starting over. Yes. Right? I mean, it's yes. a totally different realm. As LT said, you know, you used to get paycheck, medical care, uh, you know where you're supposed to be and when. Being uh, told where know, to be and Yeah, when. you don't yeah. have to really think about it. It's like, okay, I, they told me to be here. That's where I need to be. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, <clears throat> this wide possibility opens, which is a great thing, yeah. right? But it's also a scary thing. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like uh, being at the front of the boat, like the Titanic, you know, you're Leo DiCaprio there. It feels, <laughs> it feels great, but also at the same time, it's like, well, where you am I fall. going? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where are we going here? Yeah. Um, and at some point you have to land. And so uh, this is, I think this is huge because I think a lot of people who are, are transitioning from active duty, I think real estate is a really good idea. It really is. Because of the connections that they have. There's mm -hmm. so many people that they know at that point in time who, and we've talked about this many times, people who are in the military are very undereducated about what the opportunities are for them. Yeah, and so what's available to them as well. Correct. And, you know, so, you know, in real estate, it's basically you're an entrepreneur, you run your own business. And so many people that are in the real estate industry initially start off because they don't have an internship or a team process like we have within Military Mutual. Not saying that there aren't other brokerages that do a good job at training, but it is very important to have the same leadership uh, chain of command, so to speak, and that mentorship guidance throughout a person's first six months to a year in real estate. And that's what this provides to not only the internship, but also once he comes on board, he's you know ultimately a part of the team already and being able to grow uh, with the team and being able to be mentored because that's what you have in the military. I mean, you basically, from the time you come in, whether it be a deck seaman or an ensign, you're being trained by the next man up. Uh, on how to do what you need to do and then you have this hierarchy that makes sure that you're set up for success. Now people can fail but they have to work pretty hard to fail in the military. Um, you're always set up for success and that's what we ultimately want to do at Military Mutual because we give back not only to our military veterans and their families who use our services as clients but also those who entrust us by coming on board as employees or as realtors and we want to see them succeed as well. So what are you most excited about real estate Carlos? Actually, you know, helping uh, people in the milita military because uh, I bought my first home 14 years ago and luckily uh, my parents are close by so it wasn't as much of a fear for me because I knew I was going to settle down here in San Diego and want to stay here. But uh, I see so many people in the military that it, it seems like uh, they're not purchasing their first home until after they get out of the military because there's a lot of fears of, uh, you know, just the way the real estate market is, whether or not they're going to get transferred somewhere else. And that's w the one thing that why I wanted to go with Derek is because Military Mutual uh, tries to eliminate a little bit of those fears uh, by offering uh, property management for free if they get stationed within the first three years of them purchasing a house. So I just basically wanted to try to get my coworkers, my friends that I, you know that I served with, and get them the uh, enjoyment of owning their first home. So you bought a house 14 years ago. <laughs> yes, I did. Good time. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good time. It was good before time. Yeah. <laughs> the major plunge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what was that process like for you? I mean, did, did that influence why you wanted to get into real estate because maybe you, you didn't have a great process? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it, it was scary because, uh, you know, I was, uh, I think, what, 23 and, uh, you know, making my first big purchase. But uh, my dad had owned his house already, so he, he taught me, what, you know, basically some of the things to do and some of the things not to do. But uh, just basically the fears. Uh, and, I, you know, by me being prior military and serving with uh, some of my shipmates, uh, I, I figure they could at least, you know, have a little bit of trust or believe that, you know, that it's not as bad as uh, anyone seems. It's basically just uh, trying to eliminate those fears so that uh, you just take the plunge because it, I, I don't believe it's that bad as, uh, you know, some, some people fear. Yeah. So just spreading the knowledge of uh, how easy it could be. And it's almost going to be something that's a mandatory thing in the future. You know, ironically enough, people don't really understand that the largest majority actually own their own home in the military. Uh, people don't think that, oh, military don't get paid that well, they can't afford it, but BAH allows for that, the basic allowance for housing. 38% of military active duty members actually own their own home. And then you have 22% that live in uh, base housing, 7% they're in privatized housing, and this is on a nationwide scale and so forth. But the largest majority actually own their own home. And that number is going to have to increase because now you have the blended retirement system, which is basically taking away from a service member's retirement pension in the future. So now they're more responsible for developing their own investment tools to retire effectively. And home ownership is one of those critical foundations to doing an ultimate retirement it's the, the key. right way. It it's is. The, it's, the, it's the number Absolutely. one key. Here's the thing. 
if you, at the end of the day, own your home free and clear, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything's mm -hmm. going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so the sooner you can get going down that path, the better for most mm -hmm. people. I mean, especially if you're you know, lucky enough to, to buy a house when you're 23, 24, 25 sure. years old, like some people have. Yep. I mean, your house is paid off at worst case, you know, when you're 55 years old. My goodness, you are so far ahead of the game because that's the number one expense that everybody has, the housing yeah. payment. So um, the purpose of buying a home, this has been lost on a few, few generations, um, mm -hmm. is so that you don't have to make a payment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eventually, that's the point. And you stop inflation right then and there. It, Correct. It no longer are you worrying about rent raises and rent rising. That mortgage payment stays the same. And I always tell everyone within Military Mutual and in our organization, we have the greatest gift in the world that we can share. We have the knowledge about home ownership. Let's get out there and share that with everyone because, you know, if a person can fight for our country, they ought to own a piece of it is my clear saying. Um, and far too often, you don't have that as the case. Now, like I said, 38%, but it should be 100% in my opinion. Well, we're working towards it, right? Hey, that's the goal, <laughs> absolutely. You mentioned there's something that's also an important point to make from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. um, when you buy a home, it, it really, it's, it's not technically an investment. It's a hedge. Yeah. Technically, it's a hedge, right? Because it's only an investment if you're going to sell it later. If you buy it today to sell it later for a profit, that's an investment. But if you buy it so you can keep it, so you can live in it, so you can make sure that your costs are fixed, that's a hedge. Yeah. You know, that's what all the airlines do with oil. Um, you know, hedge fund managers do that with stocks all the time. They have huge positions. They hedge it with, with uh, puts and calls. Um, so you're hedging. You're saying, all right, this is my payment now. And if it's something I can afford, then I know I'm good. Um, and I know one day that payment's going to go away. And that's what you're hedging. So um, can hedges turn into investments? They can. Sometimes mm -hmm. the market moves a certain direction or things change and you go, you know what, I can take a profit off the table here and I can reallocate. That's okay. Yeah. But in reality, it's a hedge. You're saying, I'm going to lock in my housing costs to this dollar amount and it's going to stay right there for the next it. 30 years. I love it. And that's huge. Oh, it mm -hmm. is, without a doubt. And I always say that we're the worst real estate agents uh, that are out there in the nation because what we really do is we teach people that when it's time for you to transfer, Let's look at keeping your home as an investment tool or as a hedge where you can have someone else pay that rent, pay your mortgage off, and you can go ultimately go somewhere else and ultimately buy another home. Um, whereas most other realtors that are in the world, they look for what's their advantage. Hey, yeah, we could sell your home and they're doing a good cause for the client themselves. But really the, the, the goodness above that is to take yourself out of the equation and say, well, what's in the true best interest for you? How can you keep this home? How can someone else pay for it? And then you start cash flowing later on. And I love the analogy of hedging, and I'm going to start putting that into kind of our, our, our portfolio and our, our knowledge education pieces because I love it. I think that that's exactly what you're doing with real estate. You know, it was uh, one of the most read articles uh, on the San Diego Union Tribune when I was there. I wrote an article uh, that said exactly that. The, the headline was, buying a home is not an investment, it's a hedge. Hmm. And I explained it. Wow. They took that article down recently. What? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you have a copy of it still? Um, no, I know what it said, though. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you wrote write, it, right? I, I can write it again. <laughs> yeah. But I just thought it was jerkish. Wow. Hey, the Union, Union Tribune, which has new ownership now. Okay. <clears throat> um, it clearly just shows, I mean, that was a, a, a pure truth article. Yeah. An article about pure truth and, and, and then the purity of, of what homeownership is really supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's gotten in other people's minds. It's something else. Um, but it, that's really what it's supposed to be. It's a retirement tool. Mm -hmm. It's something that gives you the opportunity that, well, if I have 30 years from here until the here to make the payment, those are my working years. Mm -hmm. After that, mm -hmm. if I'm not working, if I'm retired, yeah. I should be able to live because now I don't have that payment anymore, but I still have the house. That's really the purpose. Yeah. And this article was completely about that, but the UT took it down. Oh, man. Well, you know, you look at the TV now, all you see is <laughs> flip or flop. <laughs> you see all these flip shows. And so people are thinking, oh, well, I can make, you know, $30,000. Well, yeah, you can make $30,000 on a flip if, if the stars align correctly and if you do it. Uh, with the right contractors that are in line and the basically the market is in place. But we always talk about not only the entrance strategies, but the exit strategies when you go out. And you have to have an exit plan that is just not one way. You have to be able to go to the right or to the left. And um, basically allowing for an opportunity to have a home build that wealth for you over the time is the number one exit in my opinion. Um, and not just the quick 30000 because yeah, you may get 30000 now, but if you look at it, I bought my very first home at $135,000. It's now worth $500,000 25 years later. 
four times the amount. So it's crazy for people to think, okay, if I buy this home for $400,000, it'll be worth $1.6 million in 25 years, but that is the true actuality of what it is. So are you gonna take $30,000 or are you gonna just wait around for the 1.6 million? <laughs> You know, that's how I look at it. Yeah, over long periods of time, real estate has gone up a lot. Absolutely. Um, there's no question about it. Um, so, so Carlos, just uh, back to the, the, you know, the transition, the internship program, this is what we're talking about. We are live right now right. Um, on Facebook, so I want to revisit this because this is an internship program that's created by the military for people who are still on active duty, which you are right now. Correct. Right? Yes. So you're still on active duty. You know you're, you're leaving uh, the military. You know you're going to civilian life. You have the opportunity to intern somewhere. You intern with Military Mutual to learn real estate, and you immediately got a couple deals going. How did that happen? <laughs> uh, you know, just uh, friends that I worked with in the office, uh, they were on the fence, they had some fears of uh, being stationed somewhere else, and uh, when I found out that with Military Mutual that they offered that program, I went back and I told them, I, I wish they would have had that, you know, when I bought my house, um, because that was one of the fears. What if I get stationed uh, after this chore duty somewhere else? Am I going to have to sell, uh, you know, am I going to have to deal with the headache of a property management, and to me that's one of the biggest fears that people have, and by eliminating that, uh, I just told my friend, hey, just so you know, this is what Military Mutual offers, and just like that, the next day, he's like, let's do it. And, uh, you know, very happy to help him out, and uh, again, you know, just, just a good opportunity. The Military Mutual, everyone that works there is affiliated one way or another, and, uh, you know, uh, that's what they do. They, they try to help out the military and try to get them the piece of the pie, like, like Derek was saying, yeah. because, yeah, so why not? Why would you want to serve your country and uh, have that fear of owning your own home? Yeah, uh, owning a home in your own country Correct. should be something that, that you feel very comfortable with yeah. when you're defending it mm -hmm. yeah. with your, your, your life and limb. You know, I mean, that's 100% the way it should be. So maybe we can get close to 100%, Derek. Right. It's 38 We are going to work. I mean, we are going to work our We're working towards off, it. towards getting there. But 99.9 .9 will work for me. <laughs> You'll take Sound good. I'll take 99.9, .9, but until we get there, I'm not stopping. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Great stuff, guys. So just, uh, just to recap, there is an internship program uh, for people who are in active duty to go and try out another gig. Maybe it's not real estate. Maybe someone else is interested sure. in aeronautics or you know engineering or whatever, but you have the opportunity to go and intern there mm -hmm. and check it out while you're still getting paid your military pay so you can see whether you like it or not, whether you want to go that direction, or if you are getting into real estate, which I think is a really good idea. I think it's a great opportunity, in fact. Mm -hmm. Right when you're leaving the military, you have tons of connections, tons of people that, that there who could use your help, as you found out. I think it's a great opportunity, but in that case, you know, it's a commission business. So mm -hmm. that build-up period is hard for people a lot of it times. Is. It could take two, three, four months to build up a pipeline, get deals going, get deals closed, get a paycheck. So to have that kickstart, that sort yeah. of grace period there, crossover, exactly. is huge. It and is. something that I think everyone should look into. So that's why we wanted to, to do this segment today. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Really oh, appreciate your time. Amazing you. stuff that you're doing out there in the community. And we've got more coming up right here on the Smart San Diego page, so stick around.